Welcome to Mind and Magic, where we demystify the occult and talk about all things esoteric. Today I want to talk about divination, why it's important, and why you should be using some form of it. So let's get into it. Emotional damage! Alright, so divination is one of the first skills that you should develop as a magician. And it's going to be invaluable in your practice because it's going to save you a lot of time. Because one should be doing a divination before each and every magical operation just to see if you should even do it, to see if your intended outcome is even viable. Because if you want to do an operation and you divine that it's not going to work out, are you going to spend the time doing it? Or are you going to rethink everything and see if there's another way to achieve what you want? It's really a primary reason for divination. It goes hand in hand with your magical practice because it's going to let you know if you should even commit the time to the practice of that magical operation you want to do. And if you don't do divination before your operation, things may not work out as you intended them to. And even worse, you may have just wasted your time. And that is why divination is so important because it can help prevent you. From wasting your time. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happens to a lot of practitioners who haven't made a habit of doing a divination first. A few minutes of divination can save you hours of a failed operation. Now, the type of divination to do is completely up to you. There are many forms of divination. There's tarot, geomancy, pyromancy, on and on. It doesn't really matter which form of divination you do, so long as you do it. And divination is one of those skills that the more you do it, the better you get at it. But I want to give you a few tips and secrets that is going to make it way easier for you. Now, my divination of choice is tarot, as is a lot of other people's. This is because the tarot deck has enough cards to get a detailed and nuanced reading. Each card has particular meanings associated with it, and then a completely different meaning if it's reversed. That is, if the card appears upside down. Now, we're not going to get into all that. If you're interested in the meanings of all the cards, then you'll want to check out the Advanced Tarot course on mindandmagic.com. Right now, we just want to go over doing readings in general to give you some basic tips when starting out. And even if you have experience reading tarot spreads and are no stranger to divination, you may still find value with it. Now, the first tip when it comes to divination is to use your intuition. And I know those who have been doing divination for any length of time are going to say, well, no, duh. But let me explain what I mean by that for everyone else. Divination is an intuitive art. And what I mean by this, let's take tarot for an example, is that yes, each card has particular meanings associated with it. Like a tarot book may say the Three of Swords means sadness and disappointment, heartbreak, but that doesn't mean that that card always means that. First impressions are important when it comes to intuition. So you may be divining someone's health ailment, trying to figure out what's wrong with them and you get the Three of Swords, it may not mean that they're sad. It may be their heart is having an issue. A lot of myocarditis going around these days. In other words, the first impression that you get from a card should not be dismissed. Often the first impressions you get from a reading are indeed valid. Now, a few tarot cards have dogs and cats on them. And I've had readings where the symbolism of the animal had more to do with the reading than what the card is traditionally supposed to mean. And this is why I say that you can't just only go by the books. The books are a great place to start, and you should have the traditional meanings of the cards memorized to some extent. But you also need to utilize your intuition. That first gut instinct, when the card flips over, that initial impression and feeling will go a long way into giving you a more accurate reading. The other tip I want to give is that if you don't get a reading that you completely understand or even agree with, don't just immediately do another reading. 
take some time and meditate on the reading and see if that jogs anything for you. It happens quite often that we'll have a particular inquiry that doesn't seem to align with the cards, and so it becomes difficult to interpret, and many times our instinct is to just do another reading, but you should take some time and meditate on the card's outcome and give it a chance to be revealed to you. Whether it be divination or meditation, we're both dealing with the subconscious here, and when you meditate on things like that, the answer can just pop into your head. So I guess what I'm really saying is take your time with it. Don't rush things. Spend a few extra minutes meditating on it if you don't get it right away. And because of this, do yourself a favor and give yourself some extra time when divining for a magical operation that you plan on doing. Don't wait until immediately before you go to do the operation to do your divination. Just in case you need that extra time, to meditate on it. So that's like two of the biggest tips I can give you from someone who's been reading tarot since they were a teenager. Take your time, don't rush things, meditate on the reading if you must, and exercise your intuition. What symbolism does the cards have on it that pertain to the question of your reading? Not just considering the traditional meanings of the cards, but what that card means to you, what first pops into your mind. And if you do these things, then you'll be off to a great start when it comes to divination, which you're going to need as you progress through your practice, as divination will end up saving you a lot of time and effort. And if you want to learn more about tarot in particular, check out the Advanced Tarot Course on mindandmagic.com. I'm giving a 20% discount through this video only, as well as a one-month free trial. When you sign up, you'll get a month's worth of content for no charge and no obligation. You can cancel at any time. The Advanced Tarot Course also includes the updated Master Mandala with the tarot correspondences and their associated astrological signs, angels, and demons. So check the link in the video and in the description for 20% off Advanced Tarot at mindandmagic.com. Advanced Tarot is the definitive course for reading the tarot in divination or using it in your magical practice. Advanced Tarot is a subscription series that runs for 52 weeks. Each week for an entire year, a new lesson on the tarot will be sent directly to your email inbox. Not only are we going to be learning the meanings of each and every tarot card, we're also going to be covering the astrological, cabalistic, and even spiritual correspondences of the cards. We're also going to be covering several tarot spreads and a whole lot more. Beginners need not worry about the title. There's plenty in the course to get you up and reading tarot in no time. It's called Advanced Tarot because it goes beyond what most of the books teach you about what the cards mean. You can get Advanced Tarot and other Mind & Magic programs over at mindandmagic.com today. Now, the last tip I have for divination in general is don't become dependent on it. Do not turn it into a crutch. Now, this is something I go into more detail with in the course, but I will also mention it here, that you don't want to do a divination for everything in life, to the point where you're just indecisive without it. You can't make any of your own decisions without consulting the tarot deck. If and when that happens, you need to put divination away for a while. You should only be using divination for important matters, such as your magical operations or major circumstances in your life, not trivial, mundane things, such as when you can't decide what's for dinner, because that's leading you to relying on it as a crutch. And I know this because it happened to me, and I had to put my tarot decks away for quite a few years to break that dependence. So don't think it can't happen to you. It can. So I'm just going to tell you not to overdo it. And that will do it for today. I want to thank you for joining me. Toss me a like if you enjoyed it or share it so someone else can enjoy it. Social links will be up on the screen momentarily and I'll see you next time. Take care.